Hey, good evening. Welcome to this edition of the Huddle Hippos Coaches Show. My name is Michael Rose with Vite Media, and I am pleased to be joined by Coach Will Compton. And back behind the mic, that is Trey Grubb, my broadcast producer and wonderful guy. We'll be uh, bringing you all the action this season on the Vite Media Network and, of course, Huddle.com. We appreciate Brad the Plant and all the folks with Huddle Athletics for making this possible. Making this possible being me being able to host this <laughs> show right now and Trey doing all the work behind the scenes. So, we, well, this is the Coach Show. Let's welcome in Coach Will Compton to the Coach Show. Thanks for having us, man. I know this has kind of been a little put together, slapped together, all the things you've got going on. Why not add one more thing to it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, this is, um, you know, this is something that was kind of new to me coming here uh, two years ago. Uh, we had uh, Todd Robeson. Uh, was with us, a uh, dear friend of mine, and so he's, he's stepping down and bringing y'all in was a was a great one too for us. You know, it's uh, you know I think it's important for us to be able to get in front of our fans and you know that way they get a little insight into our program. Sure. And I think that's uh, that's really big for us. You know, we got a great coaching staff. Uh, most of them have been here uh, for the majority of the two years that I've been here. Uh, we haven't had just a whole lot of turnover. It's actually been like one position. Uh, that's that's kind of been the the flexing point, but. Uh, we got a great staff here. They're excited. They brought a lot of energy to, to two days and uh, and into this first game. And so just really excited to see uh, what the Hippos bring to the table. Nice. We had the chance to do a little uh, dress rehearsal ourselves at the scrimmage that was here at Memorial a couple weeks ago. A lot of things have gone on since then. Um, one of the things we got to do during that uh, dress rehearsal for us was meet Todd and have that baton pass off to him. So we thank Brad and we also thank Todd for Absolutely. getting us into this position. Um, one of the things that Trey and I pride ourselves on, we've been together now three seasons during football. We've been together with Bite Media and KMAX Sports for the last 10 plus years. So we, we go way back, but uh, one of the things we really love is coming into a place where community is already like the central part of it. And I think in Central Texas, there's no, I'm, I'm not trying to, <laughs> you know, butter anybody up. I, I've, I served here at a church locally in Hutto, but Hutto, the community itself, with how close knit it is. Um, this serves Trey and I very well to be a part of it, so we're oh. really excited to see what happens next. And uh, we're all about being in the moment, so we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. We've got a couple of players here with us to, to talk about, but uh, before we get to that, just uh, want to make sure we, we, like as you mentioned, your coaches, but uh, so many people behind the scenes that make this go, and of course, Booster Club and parents oh. and all that stuff. That Absolutely. You know, we have a... You know, a couple of years ago, we split everything the Booster Club up into its own separate things to so where football has its own and baseball has its own. Uh, we've been blessed. We've had uh, Aaron Kuntz. She's been phenomenal uh, over the past going on three years now uh, of helping uh, organize our parents so that, you know, we're able to raise the funds so that we're able to spoil our kids a little bit. Uh, you know, we have uh, <laughs> we uh, we raise a lot of money, uh, you know, through our fans and their, you know, concession stands and things like that. And, and we turn that right back into our kids. Awesome. You know, we're we're buying food uh, for the locker rooms. We uh, have these cool new decal helmets uh, that we got out of there. And so a lot of behind the scenes, you know. And then uh, recently we just got a new superintendent, Jen Netherland. Uh, That's right. She's, uh, she's phenomenal. She's, uh, she's a big supporter of athletics uh, and definitely uh, wants to see, you know, Hudo continue to grow in the right direction. Uh, I really like what she had to say in her in her memo to the staff today. You know, it's Hutto's a big school with a small town feel. Yeah. And and I truly believe that. You know, growing up in a small town, uh, you know, when you come to Hutto, it's I mean, everybody's a hippo. It, it doesn't matter what school you go to, doesn't matter what elementary you're at, junior high you're at, you're a hippo. Uh, and you got them all in the yards, uh, and it makes for a great atmosphere. You know, on Friday night when everybody's out there supporting the hippos. Uh, you know, and we've had some some good things happen for us in the in the past couple of years, and looking forward to continuing that tradition as we move forward. Excellent. Well, we'll get to uh, the upcoming game to kick things off here in a little bit, but uh, if you would, just take us back from uh, when camp started in August to, to this point. Give us a little bit of the, the state of the hippos as far as what, what's gone on and what we're going to uh, get absolutely. ready for. No, I think, you know, it, I think it actually goes back a little bit further than, than August. It goes back to, you know, June when, when these guys were giving up uh, their summer mornings to be mm -hmm. up here four days a week. You know, we had uh, throughout all of our programs, uh, seventh grade all the way up, we had roughly 550 kids wow. uh, here for summer strength and conditioning. Uh, we had the majority of our, you know, JV and varsity uh, football team was here uh, on a consistent basis. We had, I want to say, seven or eight kids with perfect attendance this year, not nice. missing a single day, uh, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just the, the things that you get out of that start setting you up. You know, we had 
we had a late defensive coordinator change, um, you know, kind of right there, right before we started camp. Uh, and so we were able to use a lot of that time to, to reinstall our defense and to get us all on the same page so that, you know, once August came around, we were able to click a little bit better. Nice. You know, coming into August, nice. uh, we've had these guys showing up since, uh, you know, August 5th was our first day to go. Uh, had to go a little bit later because we had convocation with the school, but, you know, mm. made that one work. And then after that, they've been here uh, 6.30 in the morning every morning uh, kind of since, and it's been uh, it's been great. You know, they're, the kids are bought in. Our coaches are bought in. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of routine now. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, a couple years ago it was, uh, it was kind of new of getting up and, and everybody being here on the consistent basis. And I think that's the, the thing now is that, you know, whether you're the varsity guy or you're the, the JVB team guy that may not get a whole lot of reps, you're still here at 6.30 in the morning. And, and those guys are, are hanging out. And we've seen our program grow. Uh, you know, we're sitting right around 270, 280 kids uh, in our program from freshman all the way up. Uh, so there's a there's a lot of bodies around here and, and it's a lot of support and uh, just look looking forward to uh, to continue to see the program grow. It's amazing just uh, with my past experience with all the different schools I've been to and and worked with numbers is always a, a concern and always an issue and whether it be moving up or down from 5A to 6A whether it be having enough freshmen to uh, to have a freshman team or having enough JV to pull up in case of injury that kind of thing that's a it's huge to the program to have the numbers and the consistency like that. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're kind of like really we're, we're busting at the seams here in the field house uh, with the number of kids that we have in here, and uh, which is a good problem to have. Sure. You know, we don't we're not losing uh, kids year to year. Uh, they're sticking around. Uh, and I think it's, you know, we'll get into it with these guys a little bit, but it has a lot to do with our culture that we have here. And uh, that's the, the big thing that we talk about is, you know, culture is not just something that, you know, you slap on the wall and you say that, hey, this is our culture. Uh, it's something that's got to be, you know, uh, you can see it, you can feel it, and you know it when you walk in the room, uh, especially when the whole team's there. Nice. Well, that's a, kind of a nice segue. You're talking about leadership and, and things like that. If you want to. Yeah, we'll pass absolutely. Pass the torch to these two young men right here. Oh, uh, absolutely. So uh, blessed to have these uh, these two guys. So we uh, two years ago when I came in, uh, for those that don't know, uh, we don't have team captains, uh, so to speak. What we have is we have a leadership council, uh, and we run two of them a year. So we have our leadership council that runs through the spring. Uh, those are those are selected by me. Uh, those are kids that I want to see become leaders or need to grow as leaders sure. or are currently leaders and are able to, uh, you know, rally the rally the troops in the direction that I want to go. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have that leadership committee. And then now, uh, just this weekend, we had our coaches leadership committee that goes in during the season. And so that's voted on by the coaches uh, okay. for the six positions that it's going to be. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, in the spring, those are where I want to see this kid grow. I want to see this grow. I want to see this kid grow. And, now we've seen, you know, we've seen a lot of growth in other kids who may have not have been on that leadership council uh, that have really stepped into leadership roles. You know, guys that I uh, was hoping to have all six of them here, but, you know, they had other obligations. You know, one of those guys that, that wasn't on the, on the spring one that's, that's really grown into a leader is, is Cameron Banks. Um, you know, he was a guy that, you know, uh, was injured his junior year, wasn't able to play, had to do a lot of watching from the sidelines, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, and that takes a toll on you. Yeah. And going into the off season uh, was a little bit of a slow start for him, but has really turned into a, a leader of our secondary, a vocal leader. Uh, you know, in, in that aspect of it, and it's really been seen by our coaches. And so, uh, he was one that was a uh, was elected on here. Uh, two guys that I have here, we have Braden Daniels. Um, he was our he's our returning leading tackler uh, on the defensive side. You know, he'll be a junior this year. Uh, Mike Linebacker he makes all of our calls on the on the inside. Uh, does a phenomenal job, you know, with that, and uh, is a vocal leader uh, that we need. And then we have Cashton Laplante, uh, Coach Laplante's uh, younger son, uh, the younger, taller one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Carson would agree that he's better looking, but uh, now Carson, uh, you know, Cashton's done a great job for us. Uh, you know, has, has battled some things here and there as far as some some injuries and, and bounce back, but really shows what what you're looking for in the terms of work ethic. Sure. And you know, that's the thing that. You know, I always come back to, you know, not all leaders are vocal leaders. You know, sometimes you have those introvert leaders that, 
you know, lead by example. And you got to have a you have to have a combination of both. Uh, it's not always raw, raw guys and, and things like that. It's sometimes it's the guy that uh, maybe that, that B team guy can look at to say, you know, what do I need to do better? What, how do I need to work when it comes to the weight room? How do I need to act when it comes to the locker room? Sure. Uh, I think those are those are big. And then just the way these guys treat one another and treat the other people inside of the program is uh, is phenomenal for me. Awesome. I appreciate both of you coming. Uh, I don't know if it's short notice or whatever the case may be, but the fact that you're here speaks to your leadership and I one of you want to grab the mic whoever wants to we'll, we'll just kind of share it <laughs> but uh I'll take it first right on um just with the the leadership sense it, it talked about the spring to the to the fall mm -hmm. um what's that like to uh to have that switch mm -hmm. and to recognize your peers and how does that work within your peer group your leadership group to have that opportunity to see leadership in other people mm -hmm. And from your point of view, to recognize it, what's that? What's that? Right. No, it's huge. You know, um, going into my junior year, that spring, um, I was elected to be in the spring one, and um, that was huge. You know, we read a book every single year. Um, uh, my junior year, going into junior, we read um, Chop Wood, Carry Water. Uh, that was a great wow. book. Absolutely love that. Of you know, Chop Wood, Carry Water every single day, and you keep going every single day. And then going into my my junior year, I was um, sadly during spring ball, I tore my right labrum. So I was out for more than half that year. So sadly, I wasn't able to be in the fall um, leadership council. But um, going into this year, I was in the spring one as well. We read um, Pound the Stone. That was another great book that we read as well. And then now I was elected to be in this. But it's just a huge thing. I love having to have like six, seven guys around you being able to talk about anything that we um, go through in the locker room, anything on the field. Um, you know, we make different decisions, whether it's um, um, what game day jerseys we're going to have, um, issues that we're having in locker rooms outside, how we're going to, um, you know, create those things and bounce back from, you know, adversities. And uh, especially for having guys, especially last year, like Will Hammond and Alex Green, you know, those guys were I was around. And uh, it really, like, put in my heart that I feel like I'm a leader. And just like Coach was saying, um, I am one of those introverted guys, and I like to lead by example. You know, he he and a lot of other people they are more like outgoing, telling you what you need to do. But for me, um, I would be a person to show you, like what what, what we're doing and you know how we're gonna work on that. So for me, yeah, no, uh, the leadership council is huge. You know, we have a group text. We text all the time about things that are going on, um, what time we're meeting, what days we're meeting, and you know, I do think that it's created me to be a better person a better leader for sure 100 percent. appreciate that yes sir and when coach just mentioned your age and the fact that you were a leading tackler as a sophomore and now a junior what's it like for you to have that point of view as an underclassman in that leadership role oh it's huge it's definitely huge it definitely um it puts a fire in you to have that so young mm -hmm. it gives you um a lot of push to want to be like how we mentioned Will Ham and Alex Green, leaders on the team, by like everybody noticed that they're leaders. It gives you that push to want to be right there, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So making that step, seeing the leadership that was, and I like being in the moment. Mm -hmm. But that's always good to look up to those that were there. What does that do for you now? Like understanding that this has been handed to you for a reason. It definitely. It puts you upright. It makes yeah. you think that. You have a lot of trust put in you. Sure. The trust put in the whole leadership. But it makes you really think, like, I'm trusted. I have to do this now. It's not no one else's job. It's you. You're in the leadership. You have your spot. You have to do it. You can't rely on nobody else to do it because you have people to rely on you. And you got two people relying on each other. Nothing's ever going to get done. So you have to be that stool that other people can use to get to where they need to be. Because one day we'll all be gone. We'll graduate. And you have to be a good leader to set an example for the next people that come up. Great. Recognizes great. Mm -hmm. Iron sharpens iron kind of thing. I like to hear that. That's wonderful. Um, just to uh, to a group of leadership with, with without captains, without having that in place, um, talk to the competition. Talk to how that raises competition within your team, if at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It definitely, having that there's... I wouldn't say there's an offense and defensive side of leadership council, but there definitely is one. And it's we're together, but we get to practice. We really we put it together out there. 
and we're all a team, always a family, but we get to practice, it's compete time. So when we get back in council, you know, we get back in our groups, we talk about it. We have to go over what happened and stuff. And it just, it's good to have that many people with that many different minds, other than just say two, four captains. We have a group of six people that all think different. It's good to have all those different thoughts. Absolutely. I kind of, kind of want to piggyback off that. I mean, I think that's, you know, that's where, you know, football is a game that we play, but trying to set them up for what life is afterwards. Uh, you're going to be surrounded by a group of, you know, men and women that have different thoughts and have different beliefs and come from different backgrounds that you have to learn how to work together uh, inside of a common setting. And I think that's one of the big things that we do inside of our program. You know, when we talk about culture is that it's not just X's and O's in football. Uh, and that's that's with our coaches as well. I think that's the the, the thing that you know keeps kids coming back uh, for a lot of them is it's not just go outside and play football, come back in, and you don't even know who your coach is. You know, uh, we were laughing and joking before we got started uh, on film. They're talking about Steak Sunday and you know which I'm I'm posting and and things like that. But it's 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 one of those things where you know we want to be more than just you know the football coach on the field. You yeah. know, we want to know. Uh, you know, if Cashin's having a bad day or, you know, something's going on, you know, there's going to be a coach that goes and, and talks to him mm -hmm. and see, you know, hey, man, what's going on here? You know, what are you having trouble with? Or uh, we had one today that was having some troubles. He's got some stuff going on at the house. And so, you know, that's that's one of the things where, you know, when you know when you know your players and you know what's going on outside of football, you can help them. And in return, it helps them inside of football. And, you know, it's just – it's, it's all about relationships, and, and I think that's something that, you know, uh, is often overlooked. You know, we become a very transactional society yes. to where, you know, it's all about what can you do for me? What can you do? You know, if I treat Braden good, is he going to perform good on Friday night? And that's not really what it's like. You know, you know that's, a, that's a transactional leadership. You know, yeah. you know, you don't want that. We want transformational. Uh, we want to make sure that we're growing leaders into someone that can be productive because uh, at some point football is going to end and you're going to have to go do something else. And we want to make sure that you have those tools uh, that were learned through football, through a game that they love, through a game that we love. You know, I still get out there like I'm 17 years old. Uh, I can barely throw it like 10 yards, and I, I can't run because I have no knees, uh, liter literally. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's something that I know the value that, that comes out of this game, and, you know, I just want to pass that on to them. Uh, so that they can be great fathers, great husbands, great brothers, uh, far beyond what the game's going to take them. Uh, as a dad, I didn't have sons play any sports, but to see them thrive in being leadership because of the activities that they did take part in, it set them up to be great individuals and leaders. And to my home, one of my one of my sons is president of his fraternity, and and that came from people that took time to lead transformationally for him not just his dad and his mom but other folks around him so that's awesome as a as a father seeing this happen on you know outside of classrooms outside of you know normal day-to-day -day stuff and putting the leadership back in their hands to make decisions and to to transform mm -hmm. what is in front of them that's that's huge so i know you don't take it lightly guys but uh, make sure that you uh take this and, and use it for yourself in every aspect so that's amazing so absolutely i'm speaking for trey right now who's back there um i think this is a this is the right place for us to be to be able to witness this and to see that leadership trans translate onto the field and make calls so that's exciting from my point of view oh absolutely you know you know and it's been it's been really good you know it's been one of those things where you know they mentioned a couple guys that we had last year we had will hammond and and alice green uh will is you know, kind of going looking at him. I know we're we're talking about the future and the, and the present, but Will is probably hands down the most unique player I've probably ever been around in my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, his leadership style was was phenomenal, and the the person that he was uh, was great. And you know, the the leadership role that Alex took last year and seeing his growth between his junior year and his senior year. Uh, you know, Caster mentioned chop wood, carry water. Uh, that was kind of Alex's theme last year. And, uh, you know, he wasn't getting recruited like he wanted. Uh, and me and him just kept on talking about chopping wood, carry water, show up every day and go to work. Uh, you know, and then the results will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and he ended up second nationally with receiving yards. Wow. Uh, you know, had a phenomenal year. He's going to be playing at Tulsa. He's playing tomorrow night uh, versus Northwestern, which is another, the other school that offered him. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll be playing each other tomorrow night on, on ESPN. So excited to uh, 
to, to see him play. And, uh, you know, I think it's just big. I think that, you know, having younger guys like, like Braden here and along with our seniors, uh, it sets up for that next wave. You know, the, the original goal was to always have one underclassman yeah. uh, on that leadership council. So two years ago, it was all seniors. Uh, and Will was the he was the lone junior. Uh, on that leadership council and then going through on the next one Cashton was our was our young guy on the on the spring one mm -hmm. and uh, you know I think that's just big for for our program because you're if they don't see what it looks like then they're not going to know exactly how to do it uh, you know from that you know you can you can talk about how to be a leader you can talk about how to how to run the council and what goes on in the room and things like that but until you're actually in there and you have to hear some of those hard conversations or uh, you know, listen to a kid of why he wants to come back onto the program. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a different deal that you can't replicate, and you can't uh, just, hey man, it's gonna be like this. It's not really how it works. That's huge to have a sounding board, though, and, and absolutely you and your staff to say, hey, this, we're here. It's not just you do this. It's, it's a top-down thing, but it's the leadership isn't isn't telling people to do. It's showing people what to do. Absolutely, so, that's amazing. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for what you do and um you know we're up in the press box we don't have a lot of saying things but uh i'm just going to step in and say um you can include us in in being part of the sounding board as well if awesome. anybody needs anything we we, we got their back too so. i appreciate that yeah absolutely so uh, not looking too far ahead um san marcus is coming to town on friday and switch gears to that real quick and there's a lot going on in preparation. Yes. Not just X's and O's, not just getting uh, your too deep, not just uh, getting everybody ready to play, but it's also getting the community involved. And there's there's something that's uh, going on. You, you have yeah. some themes going on. That's kind of why we're doing these coaches shows is to promote the themes that are going to be happening. So you yeah. speak to what's going on on yeah, Friday. Yeah, absolutely. This, uh, this week is uh, the first home game of every year. Uh, is our freedom game. Uh, yeah. That's where we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge our military and our first responders. Um, you know, we ha we have a setup to where they're gonna meal uh, at the at the stadium. Uh, so we're looking forward to all of our our first responders and military to be here. Uh, we're gonna acknowledge them. Uh, we wear special decals for this game. Uh, you know, we have our American flag H uh, that we'll be wearing. Okay. Um, and so that's a uh, that's a big one. You know, for me, uh, my grandfather was in the military. My cousins are in the military. And we have uh, we have a coaching on staff that just transitioned out of the military, uh, Coach Williamson, uh, who's going to be leading our devotional on on Thursday. Okay. Uh, you know, so that's that's big for us. You know, it, it's uh, the sacrifice that they give and the sacrifice that they do uh, is something that you know not everybody can. And you know, it's uh, it's amazing for us to be able to to go out there and just you know symbolically acknowledge them and and thank them for for what they have done for us, whether it be the the EMT or whether it be the the Army Ranger. You know, it, they they've served uh, they've served us a community in our country, and uh, for us to be able to acknowledge them in in any way that we can uh, is great for us. And so I'm really excited about being a part of it again uh, in our Freedom Game, and so it's uh, it's exciting. I'm a, well. I'm an army dad. My son is uh, stationed at Cavazos and Colleen, but his unit's in Germany for a while. So, I'll try my best to keep it together on Friday night when I'm making the call. So I do appreciate that. Uh, um, it skipped this generation as far as serving our country, but my father and my father-in-law and and uh, cousins did as well. So it's a it's a big deal. So appreciate that. Oh, it's I'm excited to see what what all that takes place for that. So thank you oh. for putting that together. Uh, it, it started way before me. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd love to take credit for that. That's a phenomenal idea. Uh, but it wasn't me. You know, there's a there's a lot of people that that go into that. We have Chris Elquist. We have uh, Brad Laplante. We have all of our uh, board members and everybody else that that really started chipping in on that. And I mean, it's kind of uh, been around, you know, for a while before me. And you know, I'm just lucky enough to be here to carry on the tradition uh, with that. You know, and we got first week game so we have we have a lot of uh, a lot of things that that we do in the week you know leading into that game uh kind of talking about those you know uh one of my favorite times uh just because i was a, a dad that actually got to go do that is our uh, decals with dear ones mm. uh, you know a lot of people do decals with dads and uh that's something i wanted to change uh, you know just be, being around and coaching for going into my 22nd year uh sometimes dad isn't always there and sometimes those kids felt uh, kind of left out uh, yeah. from that thing or you know didn't want to make it awkward so we changed ours up to decals with dear ones yeah. and there's 
there's pe- there's someone in your life that's making an influence, and so we want that person to be there when you get to put on your get to put on your decal. And uh, there's nothing like that that very first time of uh, a decal and helmet. You know, uh, that very very first time when you when you get to go in the locker room and you, you got maybe mom or dad or aunt or uncle there, uh, and they're they're pulling off the decal and you get to take the picture and and things like that. You know, I remember doing it with my son. Uh, he got pulled up his freshman year, and so doing that with him, uh, kind of leading into uh, getting ready for COVID, and uh, was awesome. You know, just to decal the helmet with him and show him, show him exactly where this goes and where do you put the flag and where do you put the number and where do you put the the Texas and you know it's a it's a special occasion, and uh, we're excited about doing that this week. Um, you know, another thing that we do is our is our breakfast with champions. Uh, that's something that our uh, you know, our dads and mentors have, have really bought into on Friday mornings. They come up here and, and cook the kids breakfast uh, and give them, you know, some words of advice. And so uh, got a big shout out for J.R. Fields. He's the one that's organizing it this year. Uh, shout out to Aaron as well, because uh, one of the things that we wanted is, uh, you know, again, we talk about, you know, all the contributions from the community and things like that. We wanted a Blackstone uh, so that we could do... Uh, you know, we could do fresh eggs and sausage and pancakes and Ooh. and all that type of stuff for what time? What time hey, is that? Yeah, 7:30 on on Friday morning. All right. Uh, you know, so but that's that's something that we want to do. You know, we we've, we've done breakfast tacos for the whole the whole program. Uh, we did that last spring, and so you know, being able to do things like that, I think that's where you get more of that family atmosphere. You know, anytime that you can break bread together, uh, you know, those are times that you get to sit down around and talk and visit and and laugh and joke. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's with, not with the, uh, you know, maybe you're sitting down with the offensive guys, you're sitting with the offensive linemen uh, and watching them shovel food into their mouths. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're moving away from the offensive linemen because of the way they eat. But no, it's uh, <laughs> it's a it's a great night, you know, with our with our family dinner and then our you know and then our breakfast with champions uh, and being able to uh, to lead that into a, a Friday night game. Well, I'll be at a, a certain high school just a little bit south of here Friday morning, so I uh, <laughs> I may. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I may get lost and come up here real quick, but that sounds great. Again, that's how, again to the community aspect that we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, that's that's amazing uh, to just step into that to to I guess plant that seed, let it grow, add sprinkle a bit more fertilizer on it, and add to it. That's huge. And again, um, all the people involved. That's it's amazing. Appreciate you being able to to call them out and shout no, them out like that. It's, I mean, it takes, <laughs> a lot of people don't understand how many parents it actually takes to uh, to have an active booster club and to, to do all the things that we want to do. You know, where, uh, you know, with our Freedom Game, you know, on Friday we have one of our, our parents, uh, one of our players, Drake McPool, uh, JV running back. Uh, his mom's in the in the military. She's bringing her squad down and they're going to work the concession stand. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, for the first half of the for the first half of the game in our home concession stand. Okay. Uh, so and then bringing them out on the field and acknowledging them. And so it it takes uh, it takes a lot of people. It takes you know 30 people in a concession stand uh, on a Friday night. It takes parents bringing the meals up here on Thursdays and Fridays for for pregame meals. Uh, you know, it's a it's a you know you got to be invested in it. Yeah. And, and we got some phenomenal parents that that have done a great job of making sure to take care of our kids. And uh, I can't thank them enough. Uh, you know, because it's not all about just donations and money and things like that. You know, it, it does take those things. Uh, so when he flashes that uh, that QR code, don't don't forget to put in on that. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's one of those things where you know we want to we want to make sure that these kids have a phenomenal high school experience. Yes. And, and I think that's uh, you know yes you're going to remember that you made a tackle on the 32 yard line on the right hash and it was the game winning thing. By the time you're 35, it was the one that won the state championship, even though you didn't go. Uh, it's one of those things that's going to be, you know, remembered. Uh, but they're also going to remember those times where they were sitting in the locker room and we rolled the TV in there and someone brought the, the PlayStation up and they were playing NCAA uh, while the JV game was going on. And so, and I got y'all's TV and rolled her in there and said, <laughs> we're ready to go. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, just those things are, are, are great for our kids. Absolutely. Um, the Rattlers coming to town. Mm-hmm. Oh, all these things we're talking about with the friends, family, everyone being involved, the distractions. There's so much going on. What's it? What's it to a coach to to minimize distractions and just get back to actually 
getting to the field yeah. and playing the game and remembering everything that you need to remember. I think it's more about routines. You know, we're we're pretty steady on our routines, and I think if you can keep uh, if you can keep coaches uh, and then you can keep kids in routines and, and not deviate from those. Uh, then all the distractions, there's not really a whole lot of outside distractions. You know, it's, it's one of those things where Monday morning we reported at, you know, 6.20. Uh, we were in meetings by 6.30. We were in uh, group meetings by 6.40. We were out on the field at 7 o'clock. You know, Tuesday was kind of the same routine. Wednesday starts a little bit later. We start in the weight room. But, you know, if you if you clearly communicate with your parents, you clearly communicate with your, your players and your coaches, then, you know, Sunday at 5 o'clock, they know what the week's going to look like. Sure. Uh, and you know that, you know, yes, we're going to have a pep rally on Friday morning, uh, and there's going to be 30 minutes in there that whatever else. But, you know, we've kind of trained ourselves to where, you know, we're going to go do that. We're going to come back. I'm going to blow the whistle, and we're going to go out there, and I'm going to blow the whistle twice and, and tell them eyes, and everybody's going to lock in, and they're going to have their toes on the line, not touching the green. Uh, and it's these guys like these holding those other guys who haven't been a part of that and getting them to understand that, hey, all right, all that other stuff is, is great, but now let's get back on, on focus of what we got to do because, uh, again, we want to win on Friday night. We want to be successful. We want to make sure that we put on a, a great show for our fans uh, who are there to support us. Nice. Well, it's sounds like everything is in order. All the left is to take on the Rattlers. So with that, what are, what are we expecting to see from – San Marcos when they come up, you know they are you know they're uh, a multiple spread offense, uh, kind of run a three three stack on defense. Uh, so they're gonna they're flying around. They're, they're doing a lot of blitzing. Um, you know they still have a relatively young team uh, that they'll be bringing here, uh, and so you know it's it's tough to tell when you only see one scrimmage. You know they don't have numbers on the you don't know exactly who's who or you know which one's the tight end that we got to make sure that we check to or. You know, who's the tight end and the H-back. Uh, so those are going to be things that we got to figure out in the, in the first couple uh, drives and, and pregame and things like that. But, you know, we're excited. And I think that, you know, one of the things that, you know, you talk about distractions and stuff like that, and one of the things that we focus on is us. You know, if we know uh, what we're supposed to do on any given play and what checks that we're supposed to make or, you know, when we call this play on offense, this is what we do. No matter if they're giving us a three-man front or a four-man front, uh, we're going to be able to, to execute. And so, uh, you know, excited. Coach Walsh has is, is done a phenomenal job there uh, at San Marcos as, as he did at Denton Geyer when he went to state championships. Uh, he's, uh, he's a great one. Trey was trying to get somebody to give him the microphone, but now you get to hear this. This is Trey Grubb, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Trey? <laughs> so I just had a question for the kids. Um, when it comes to being out on the field, when the coaches aren't there, right, how do y'all hold each other accountable? How do, how do y'all navigate the game whenever the coaches really aren't there to try to help you through it? Uh, yeah, on like Friday nights, you know, it's huge whenever you have a breakout play, especially on we are both defensive guys. Um, usually for me, whenever I see somebody either make a mistake or um, – I see the offense doing something that we haven't seen before and I can recognize it, you know, I will bring in that person, I will see and I will tell them, you know, let's do this instead of, you know, what they're telling us. And then after that drive, once we see that, uh, we'll go to the sideline, we'll talk to our coaches, you know, after drive goes on, we go to the bench, we all huddle up in a circle, we have our uh, usually our defense coordinator or our uh, Cody defense coordinator, we're on a huddle and we talk about what's going on, but you know, we all hold each other accountable. Um, on the field and you know we're going to talk about everything that's going on that we see in there um, as well but you know we do a really good job with that whether that's in practice or that is on Friday nights as well. Awesome. To kind of piggyback off of that it's a lot of uh, holding accountable for sure and preparing for it the week making sure everybody knows what their assignment is and knowing that someone knows their assignment it's easier to correct them yeah. than have to explain this is what you have. This is what you do. Why'd you do that? You know, mm -hmm. they know it. You just gotta, you gotta make them notice that someone else noticed them, and so they won't do it again. I feel like when someone notices you messed up, it's way more different than when you know you messed up. You need that voice to tell you you messed up, and you're like, oh man. Those of us, uh, um, uh, sorry, those that will listen to Trey and I's broadcast, we will tell Trey if we see something, a mistake or. Something that a miscue, any sort. Trey will bring up the phrase "goldfish," <laughs> and goldfish. 
have the shortest attention span or memory. It's memory. 15 seconds. Yeah. So just to be a goldfish and forget it and to move on to the next. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good point, and I'm glad to hear that you all have that in place. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of moving parts, obviously. Talk to distractions. San Marcos, uh, with uh, all the things that they're bringing to the table, um, what are you most excited about seeing from these young men on Friday night? You know, we're replacing a lot of a lot of key players from last year. Mm -hmm. And so uh, offensively and defensively, you know, sometimes you have where your whole prior year, the year before, we had majority of our offense coming back, uh, and it was a lot of new defensive guys. Uh, this year, it's, it's a lot of new faces on both sides of the ball or playing different positions. Like, Cashton was a safety for us last year, now moving to, to linebacker. And, uh, you know, really to, to help our team, also to help with his recruiting uh, and kind of where he's going to fit at the next level. And, uh, you know, those are things that we want to make sure that we're able to do for, for kids. And so I'm excited to see us, you know, always excited to see us compete. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the, the big things inside of our program that we compete in. It doesn't matter, you know, what it is really at. Uh, we're an extremely competitive group. And, uh, you know, just the opportunity to go out there on Friday night and, and compete against somebody else. And, you know, it's, it's practice is awesome. Uh, two days is fun. Uh, but beating on each other for, you know, two weeks and things like that, uh, all you want to do is go out and, and play somebody else, yeah. you know. And it's uh, – I love the chess match uh, on a Friday night. You know, this is uh, – in 22 years, this is my first year coaching defense. Uh, I've been an offensive uh, coordinator for 18 of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so when we had the late change in, in coaching staff, you, we couldn't find the, the right guy uh, for us. And so, you know, I told him I'd go over to the, to the defensive side, and I've absolutely had a blast. Uh, this is probably one of my, so far, uh, this is one of my favorite years coaching because it's been challenging for me. Um, you know, <laughs> from Coach Gaylor laughs at me a lot. Our, one of our defensive coordinators, he laughs at me because I had to learn to draw upside down. Uh, offense draws one way, defense draws another. <laughs> and, you know, I had my whiteboard in here in the summer, man. I'm in here drawing, and I'm like, oh, man, I did it backwards. And then I had to draw it the other way. And so, you know, just, you know, something that seems like <laughs> a little thing. But being able to, to go back out and now have a position group yeah. uh, has, been, has been fun. Uh, you know, I'm coaching the safeties. And it's been a lot of communication with those guys, and, and it's, I'm seeing a lot different secondary than what we've had uh, over the past couple of years. You know, uh, the, way, the way they talk uh, has been phenomenal. And, nice. you know, and that's what I'm seeing more with this defense than, than defenses prior is the communication aspect. You know, we're getting uh, – there was a practice going into, uh, into the, the white scrimmage where I didn't call a single secondary coverage. We had our checks, and they knew what was going on, and they're sitting there, and they're calling them, and they're checking off of it, and they're checking the blitzes and things like that. And so for us to just sit back and kind of watch that based on if back was here or back was there, trips or doubles or what it was, and, and being able to talk through all that, uh, you know, that gave me a lot of confidence in, in the guys that, that we're going to be putting on the field because if they can, if they can recognize those things and, and understand what to check it to, uh, and why we're doing that, uh, you know, with like with everything else, if you know the why, uh, then you're gonna be a lot more successful. And uh, you know, and we saw we saw great things. You know, with that white scrimmage, uh, I think it was four to one. Uh, us in that white scrimmage, Cashton had two interceptions. Um, you know, one taking it to the house, uh, and it was and it was something that you know you know even though I'm coaching safeties, being the head coach, I get to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something that you know me and him had talked about not being fast flow over the top, not being fast flow over the top. And they ran a zone RPO, and he was slow uh, on his read, and he's standing. The quarterback did not see him, and he stood there and, and threw it to him twice, just mm -hmm. directly to him, not like I made an athletic play. Uh, not that Cash is not athletic, but <laughs> the, <laughs> the, ball was, the ball was right to him yeah. uh, because he played it, you know, uh, perfectly. And uh, that's, uh, those are the things I'm excited about, and seeing those things executed on Friday night. Just letting things come to you is a big part of any athletic event and, and just being in that moment. So... We are very excited to have the catbird seat up there in the press box, and uh, we're uh, very grateful to have this time. I don't, we didn't have a watch to it. It was kind of fun just to free flow, so we appreciate you just going with it. Yeah. Gentlemen, gentlemen Cashton, Braden, correct? Thank you very much for being a part of this and sitting through a couple of old guys talking football. Appreciate your insight and wish you all the best of luck. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to come on Tuesdays moving forward love to catch y'all and have an interview yeah. and um, we'll, we'll have a, a good time together so appreciate it Trey thank you so much 
Trey Grubb behind the scenes. This has been show number one. Coach Will Compton, the Huddle Hippos, taking on San Marcos on Friday night. Make sure you tap on that QR code. Make sure you give generously because you can see what this is all about. So with that, we'll conclude. Coach show number one, Michael Rivers, Trey Grubb, Coach Will Compton, signing off. Until next time, y'all, go Hippos. Appreciate it.